right, friends, what's up? It is uh, the weekly weigh-in episode two here on a beautiful and uh, snowy, snowy in, in Seattle, Washington, Sunday. Happy Valentine's Day. You know, it's funny, um, I was talking to a couple of gals in my uh, one of my, the, my online business classes I'm in and uh, was, was commenting about how I feel like I missed the snow this year because I, I think it snowed once when I was gone for Christmas. And then, uh, you know, same thing, Coach and I were talking about this uh, Friday in class, and we we're both like, man, it'd be nice to get some snow, because that's why we're, that's kind of why we're in this part of the country. And sure enough, I guess the uh, the snow gods heard heard our pleas, and so we were, we've been blessed with uh, the white stuff, man, probably since, uh, what, Thursday afternoon, it's been kind of on and off, pretty heavy, in fact, uh, yeah, just just started coming down again, so uh, thankfully the streets are, are getting clear, so life is you know, not not as bad as I hear it is in some other parts of the PNW. But uh, anyway, so enough banter. I've got a pretty packed uh, packed episode today. Thank and uh, thank you guys, of course, for sending in the questions and discussion topics. Um, but before we get started, of course, I have to give a, a special thank you to my brand partners, uh, FNX for Sports Nutrition, who are the makers of this, which is pretty much my my favorite protein ever. Now I've been using it for a little over a year, and uh, I love it. It's great for pre workout. It's great in the morning. And I just like the way it tastes and, you know, it doesn't mess with my guts, which is really nice. So, um, yeah, head over to uh, fnxfit.com, use my code, fnxcoach Seth Gibson. That'll save you about 20%. Um, there'll be a link, uh, of course, in my bio and in the description afterwards. And um, my second partner, uh, Cascadia Hemco. If you are a hemp and CBD user, you should uh, check them out. Uh, support some small and local businesses. Uh, get some some great products like these. I've got uh, this Cannabis Basics Balm, this uh, Lazarus Naturals Tincture. There's probably probably two uh, two of my new favorite products I'll keep using for a while. Uh, same thing. I've got a, a code for you there. Go to CascadiaHempCo.com. Uh, use the code CoachSeth15. And of course, the link will be in my bio and the description. All right, let's get to it. So first uh, first up, Rise 45 update. Um, you know, <laughs> it's crazy. We're uh, we're we're in the very literal kind of end times, you know, uh, three more days. So it's actually over Wednesday, uh, last, last three days, uh, the last, you know, 43, 44 and 45 Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And, um, yeah, it's been pretty cool. I mean, I, I think I've mentioned this and I'll talk a little bit more about it in the, in the general training update, but I'm actually going to do another cycle. And I had a question about uh, Rise 45 from, from the chat, which was, uh, what was my favorite part of the Rise 45 workouts? And you know, the, well, so there's a couple things. Um, so I've, first of all, I'm not a CrossFit hater. I'm not a CrossFit detractor, anything like that. I have a lot of friends who are CrossFit certified, CrossFit coaches, um, unbeknownst to some folks, actually, I mean, way, way back in the beginning. So uh, Rob Wolf and I, if you know him, uh, we, uh, we used to train a couple of together many, many years ago. And so when he first moved to Chico, I, I remember we actually went to dinner with uh, Glassman and a bunch of folks, you know, right before he had gotten kind of NorCal set up. So yeah, so actually CrossFit and I actually have a little bit of a connection, but I'd never really done CrossFit style programming. And it, it was really fun. You know, I mean, there's, there's, it, it's funny. Um, there's some things you don't think about until somebody actually programs them for you. And then you're like, Oh, I guess you could do that. Like, for example, uh, you know, I mean, we've all done EMOMs, right? Every minute on the minute. Uh, one of the things that they programmed for us in the Rise 45 workouts was it'd be like, you know, every three minutes at the top. And, you know, and it's funny, you don't think about doing that, but it's like, oh, yeah, I guess you could. You know, it doesn't have to be every minute on the minute. It could be every block of time at the beginning. And uh, that was really cool. Um, I think um, I'm going to definitely keep using stuff like that just for the uh, the work capacity and, you know, way to, way to scale kind of volume and intensity because that that's really fun. And um, that was, I'd say that was one of my favorite parts, but the overall favorite part was kind of the, the core workout. Um, it's, it's really weird. I do core work, I, I do core exercises, you know, core training, but not a ton. And I'll, I'll have to admit, I haven't done much. I hadn't done much since gyms shut down and I was training at home doing kind of the pre-Rise 45 stuff. So I think the combination of um, you know, density plus core work really, really helped. I mean, I, cause I noticed, I mean, by the, you know, now that we're kind of at the end of this, the, the big change I've really noticed is in my jujitsu game. I mean, it's a lot easier for me to invert, you know, it's a lot easier for me to do, you know, things like, like, you know, shoot up and catch legs, for example, or shoot up and catch triangles. Um, and you know, I, I attribute that of course, a hundred percent to the core work. So that's something I'm going to probably keep doing. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's really simple stuff, you know, I mean, things like jackknives or V-sits or, you know, big threes or side plank extensions, you know, so it's not super crazy things. It's just probably stuff that, you know, I should just be doing anyway. So, and you should too. So <laughs> we'll keep doing that. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of the Rise 45 update. I'm looking forward to doing uh, another block. So getting into the general training update. So for the 45 days following, which will bring me 
to 90 days and right up to probably right up to my first tournament in April. I'm going to be doing, so they gave us two versions of Rise 45. They gave us a gym version and a body weight version. And I did the, I did a, uh, like if, if you've been following, you know, I did the sort of my unconventional take on the gym version. And so for the next 45 days, I'm going to be doing the body weight one just because I, I really, really want to focus on doing what I can to get really, really get tournament ready. So, you know, I want to do stuff that I feel like is going to support my roles. So that means I'm going to be doing... Uh, like I said, the body weight stuff just for movement competency, and then I'm I'm gonna toss some hypertrophy work back in, mainly for the metabolic stress work. It's funny I was gonna I was gonna do a kind of more of a strength endurance block because I I'd felt like that was maybe something that was lacking, but my roles in my training, especially like when you know when I'm dialed about my nutrition, feel really really good. I mean I'm not getting gas, and we don't you know we don't roll we don't roll super soft at at tenth land. I'm not, it's not like Every uh, every roll is a championship round, but we don't. Um, yeah, we don't mess around. So, uh, which which I kind of dig, uh, unless you know it's like Thursday and we're doing eyes closed rolling or you know we're doing flow roll warm up. But um, but yeah, it's felt really good. So I think I'm just gonna get back to the stuff that I kind of want to do. You know, I haven't done a hypertrophy block in a while, and um, yeah, I'm excited about that. I think uh, I think there's um, there's a way you can make those two things somewhat complementary. So I'm going to experiment a little bit, definitely using some of the stuff that we've been going over in PPSC Masters, and then just some of the other training ideas and kind of training philosophies I'm familiar with. So that's general training. Um, let's get to the questions. So first question, since I, since I mentioned some supplements already, um, I got a question about uh, some general tips for how to start a supplement regimen. So what I'm gonna, what I'm going to tell you about that is... I'm not going to recommend anything specific what, because, you know, it's kind of different for everything. I mean, yeah, there's some things that, you know, are going to help everybody, I think, you know, and I think, I think we know for the most part what those are things like protein powder, EAAs, creatine, et cetera, et cetera, uh, water, uh, electrolytes. Um, but I, I would say, first of all, you know, f it's like everything, right? Figure out, figure out what your goal is, figure out, figure out where your gap is, you know, figure out what your training is going to be like. And then of course, get everything else dialed, right? I mean, that's, you know, that, that word supplement, we, we kind of tend to gloss over the meaning, but it's, you know, that's exactly what they are, right? So if you're, you know, you've heard it from a bunch of people and I'm going to, I'm going to reiterate, you know, if your sleep's not dialed, if your diet's not dialed, if your training isn't dialed, you need to worry about those first. But, um, once, you know, once you've got that dialed in, um, it, it's, pretty simple actually you know find you know do some research find a find a good company first of all i mean there's a lot of you know if you've been into a vitamin shop or a gnc you know there's a lot of stuff out there uh there's a lot of brands now i mean just because the supplement industry is for you know in most part unregulated so pretty much any anybody can put together supplements so i would recommend doing some homework you know i'd recommend going on some forums going on some sites um going on company websites you know trying a few things out you know if um, you know, I, that can get a little pricey, but I, I'd say it's a, I'd say kind of an investment worth making, you know, and, and, you know, this is coming from somebody who's tried a lot of supplements over the last, good Lord, 25, almost 30 years now, I'll say 30 years now. Um, and it's, yeah, like I said, I think it's worth the investment because, you know, you're going to, you're going to learn what you like, you're going to learn what you don't like, you're going to learn what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And, you know, you might um, you might actually come across something that that changes your mind about things too. I guess is what I'm going to say. I'm trying to think of how to phrase that. So, for example, so protein powder is a great example, right? I mean, I'm pretty hit and miss with protein powder, and that's that's kind of why you know I like to talk up the FNX stuff so so uh, so hard is because it really really works for me. Um, you know, I actually started using the restart because uh, way back when, before the world was crazy and stupid. Um, I was going to morning jujitsu classes, but I'm, I don't know. Some people can. I can't do jujitsu fasted. And so I was looking for something to just kind of get me going. And so I tried their their uh, restart protein kind of apprehensively, shall we say, knowing my uh, what my experience with protein powders was like. And it, it actually worked really well. So I figured, hey, let's try the rest of them. And that's actually sort of what convinced me to kind of sign up to the uh, for the ambassador program and then kind of, you know, go up to the next tier and and now I'm here talking to you about them, about them. So, yeah, so do your research, you know, and, and that's something, you know, I mean, there may be something like, you know, you might come across a company who, 
uh, let's see, has some business practices that kind of align with your values, I guess is what I'm going to say. You know, maybe you like uh, the causes they support. Maybe you like how they do business. Maybe you like how they source ingredients. I mean, I think nowadays those are all valid things to think about, right? Especially if you've got, um, if you have a little bit of flexibility in, in you know, kind of how you, how and where you spend your money. So, you know, if, if you don't need to just get the most bang for your buck, but uh, if you do, I mean, obviously then it just comes down to, you know, researching what product is, is going to do that. But, you know, and in that case, you need to really, really have an understanding of kind of what goes into supplements and what compounds do what. And again, you're going to have to try things and see like how said compounds affect you and make sure that you really are getting the most for your money. And then of course, you know, once you're actually in it, figure out a schedule, you know, and try and try and stick to it. I don't know, for at least a month is at least, and that, that's just kind of from my experience. I think, I think usually after about a month, I can tell how something's going. And so I would recommend that unless, unless of course, unless you have some horrible adverse reaction, you know, right off the bat, then, you know, don't, don't try and grind through it and hope that you're going to adapt or whatever, you know, figure out what it is that's causing that, um, that reaction and then pivot away from it. And then another, another thing I'd say, and probably this is the last little tip on this, like I said, we've got a lot to talk about and, uh, I don't want to be, um, I don't want to be going too long is, uh, start with the recommended dose. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I've done, you know, and, and I'm not, you know, I, I've made this mistake. I, I mean, there, there's a certain, um, there's a certain GDA that I take right now. I'm not going to, I won't tell you which one it is, but, uh, I mean, I remember when I was first on it, um, I think I took something like four times the recommended dose just because I had forgotten exactly, like, like I, I'd kind of gotten off schedule and, and, you know, I gave myself a, you know, a, a bit of a hypoglycemic spell and it was not pleasant and, but Hey, at least I know this stuff works. So yeah. So, you know, so, so start with a recommended dose, you know, titrate up or down based on how that makes you feel. And, you know, at some point, you know, hopefully you settle into a groove and you go from there. So, um, that's kind of, kind of a general sort of general tips. And I mean, I hope, hopefully a lot of that's common sense, but, uh, again, if you have questions about any of that, feel free to hit me up and I'm happy to kind of go more in depth about, uh, kind of what, you know, what, what maybe how I might approach certain, you know, certain cycles, if that's something you're, you're curious about, or, you know, certain, if there's certain brands, other brands I recommend, I'm happy to talk about that too. So yeah, that's what I got for starting a supplement regimen. Uh, next question I got was, I uh, need some advice on keeping calories down for fat loss. And, uh, that's a good one. So the way that I had, uh, I answered this on my story initially was, um, was first of all, prioritize protein. I mean, that's the first thing you should do is, you know, you should make sure that, you know, you, you should figure out your macros. And I, I, I say, I always say lead with protein because that's, that's kind of the, the key player in fat loss. Um, so that's kind of a two part thing. I mean, you want to figure out your protein, but you also obviously need to figure out your calories. And there is a great calorie calculator I like. I'll throw that up on screen right here. And it'll actually be in the link and be, be in the link and in, in, in the description. Sorry, it'll be in the description. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and, um, yeah, so once you've got your calories figured out, once you've got your macros figured out, like I said, lead with protein, figure out kind of what your second, uh, I guess what your primary fuel is going to be, if it's going to be carbs or, um, or fats, I can't forget that. It's like, how do, how do you forget fats, man? And, um, uh, and then, and then, you know, just kind of, um, kind of, f- uh, find foods that you like eating. You know, I mean, I said find proteins you like, but you're going to want to find foods all across the spectrum. You're going to want to find proteins you like. You're going to you're going to you're going to you're going to want to find carb sources you like. You're going to want to find fat sources you like. And you know, make sure you're measuring. Make sure. I mean, if if you're like me, I mean, come up with an eating plan. I I pretty much eat the same thing every day. You know. So that makes it really easy for me. You know, I just have a spreadsheet that has all my foods. And I mean, I basically, I, I wrote, I made my own kind of calorie tracker in, in Excel or Google sheets, I guess I don't use Excel and pretty simple, but, um, you know, if not, there's a bunch of great cookbooks out there, you know, like, uh, anabolic cookbooks, uh, Greg Doucette has one, uh, Remington James, you're all kind of, you know, fitness YouTubers. And, and again, I'll post links to these, um, in the description if you're watching this on YouTube, but, um, that's really what it comes down to is, you know, prior, you know, f- you know, figure out your calories, prioritize proteins, uh, figure out your primary fat and then find foods you like eating. And, um, you're going to have to play around with that calorie number. Um, because there, there there's a bunch of things that you're going to see, you know, you're going to, cause you're going to want to find that sweet spot where you can, where you can I like that sweet spot. That's, 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 that's my, my, I guess my, my official, uh, pantomime for sweet spot. And just remember that, um, 
But yeah, you're gonna wanna find that, that sweet spot where you can train, but you're also losing, but you're also not feeling like garbage. I mean, it's, you know, because let's be honest, it's really easy to just crash your calories and then just kind of grind through your workouts. I mean, I've, I've done it, trust me, you know, you know, and especially depending on what kind of supplements you're taking. But, you know, that's not sustainable. Um, you know, you might be able to do it for a couple months, depending on what all your, you know, how, how things kind of shake out for you. But if you've, if you've got a long haul, I mean, you're going to want to figure out something sustainable. So, you know, you're going to want to be in just a tiny deficit. And that's, and that's kind of when you got to, you know, you got to go to that scale every so often and, you know, make sure that, that you, you know, that your number is kind of, you know, that you're seeing a trend, right? So, you know, I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not an RD. I mean, I'm going through my PN, PN again, just for fun. So I know a bit, um, but that's, yeah, that's kind of the, I think the simplest I can make it. So, um, if you have specific questions about, you know, macros, splits, calories, you know, kind of anything dietary. I mean, of course I'm not, I can't legally make recommendations since I'm not an RD, but shoot me a question. And then like, and none of that stuff that I said, you know, don't, don't take that as a, as a prescription. Don't take that as that's just kind of how I think about it. So that's, that's not an official, here's how to diet for fat loss. Um, so yeah, so that's what I got on that. Um, moving right along. Let's see. Ooh, here's a good one. How to train for BJJ without a school. Um, man, <laughs> the purists are going to hate me, but, um, you know, get some mats, you know, they're cheap. I mean, it's funny. A lot, of, a lot of the mat companies now are selling 10 by 10 home mat setups really cheap because, hey, we're all stuck at home. So they figure that's a great way to make some money. And it is. Uh, get some mats, get some friends and head to YouTube and BJJ Fanatics, you know, pick up some DVDs, watch some videos on YouTube. Um, you know, I know a lot of people say that uh, that's not the way to go, but you know, the, the quality of BJJ instructionals and tutorials you can find, whether it's on BJJ Fanatics or on, you know, Because Jitsu or, you know, Jiu-Jitsu X or any of these places, other like that, or even YouTube is very, very high level. I mean, it, it's going to be a little tough without kind of having the proper understanding to, to really kind of piece the moves together. But, you know, you can find basics, you can find basic tutorials. I mean, there's, you know, BJJ Fanatics has tutorials on, you know, how to get started that are basically, you know, you know, white belt jujitsu. I mean, same with uh, YouTube, you know, if you, if you go and search five moves that a beginner should know, you'll find videos on that. And they're pretty well broken down. You know, I mean, I think the people that probably made them, you know, made them with the understanding that, you know, somebody who's obviously new to jujitsu is going to be watching this. So, and, you know, the story I like to tell is, you know, my coach, um, uh, Nathan Orchard, you know, if you look him up, uh, he's, you know, he's pretty accomplished, you know, he'll tell you he, he didn't really, in fact, we were just talking about this Friday, he really, you know, in his own words, he didn't really train with anybody regularly until he was about a brown belt, you know, and now he's a bit of a special case because, you know, he was a wrestler and then he was an MMA guy and then he got into jujitsu and, but same thing, you know, he just got together with friends, was on forums, would go down to, to LA and, you know, train at 10th Planet HQ, you know, got his, and got his blue belt and his purple belt just from, you know, just from training on his own, going to, going to matches and winning, you know, going to tournaments and winning, and then, you know, just kind of checking in with the mothership every so often. So it's, it's totally doable. I mean, and, you know, let's be honest, you know, Gracie University, that's pretty much what they do. You know, they put a curriculum online for you and, you know, you watch it and, you know, they'll, they'll belt you up to, I think, blue belt just from training online and then going in and testing. So, you know, there's nowadays, if, if you want to learn BJJ, there's really no reason not to. I mean, it's, it, it's pretty easy to get started. I, mean, I think you can get these mat setups for less than a grand, probably, and probably significantly less than a grand, depending on where you shop. So, you know, and 10 feet by 10 feet, that's enough for two people to drill on. So that's my advice there. Friends, mats, and uh, video tutorials. And, uh, you know, and of course, if you can get to seminars every so often, you know, if you can get, get in with the community, um, definitely do that. And, you know, maybe even find somebody that's close enough that it's practical for you to go visit maybe once a month, maybe once a quarter, just check in. And, you know, you know, make a road trip, you know, of course, go to go to tournaments. But um, yeah, there's, there's really no reason you can't do this on your own these days. I mean, it's kind of like everything, you know, we like to say, hey, we live in this time where, <clears throat> you know, I can, I can pretty much uh, learn anything for free on YouTube, which you can. And that kind of includes things like like BJJ. So 
Yeah, uh, you know, go for it. And you know, if you uh, if you need if you have questions about kind of a learning path or where to get started looking for videos, definitely hit me up because I've I've done a bit of that. I mean, even though I've always had access to schools, you know, there have been times, say, due to work or uh, other things where I haven't trained as regularly, and so I've that's pretty much what I've done. And just you know, watch videos, watch matches, and just kind of keep it in my head. So um, yeah, so that's my advice there. Uh, let's see. Last question. I actually have two more questions, but one of them I'm going to save for next week because I actually want to go in, in, go a little bit in depth with it, and, and I think I'm kind of running out of time. So, um, so we'll skip that one, and I will answer this. Uh, this will be the last training question. The question is, what can you talk a little bit about the benefits of mace training? So this was from somebody who just bought their first mace and and has been watching my reels. Thank you. I'm glad. I hope they're helpful, um, and uh, hopefully the uh, music choice wasn't too offensive. But um, I'm actually going to call it um, offset weight training because to me, so here's a dirty secret, even though I've done a ton of mace courses and, you know, I'm, I'm friends with folks like Eric Milland and, and, uh, you know, Rick Brown, you know, we've, we've all hung out. We've, I've been to their courses, you know, we've been, you know, gotten high together, <laughs> all kinds of funny things. Um, um, I am not really a mace guy, you know, so I'm going to, that's, which is why I just kind of, which is why I kind of just lump it all under offset weight training. Um, not that I, not that there's anything wrong with, you know, being a mace specialist or, you know, if you're like a, you know, uh, one of like a steel mace flow fo folks or, I mean, I've gotten no problem with that. That's just not what I do. So I'm not the best person to tell you like, what are the specific benefits of a specific style of mace training? Because I don't really do it, but I mean, training with offset weights, you know, it's, there's a couple things. And I think I boiled it down to, um, for me personally, was this idea of promoting these three things that we talk about in uh, PPSC, which are sequencing, stability, and smoothness, right? Because um, think about, here's, here's a great example. Um, imagine you have a barbell and you're gonna try to do a row. You're gonna try to just do, do a bent over barbell row, but you've only got one side loaded, right? Well, what's gonna happen if you try and just rip that thing off the ground like you see most people doing um, kind of their barbell rows anyway. I mean, it's going to kind of flop all over the place and be unstable, right? Because you've only got one side loaded. So, you know, you can do things like, say, aim to keep the bar level. You know, I mean, you know, your rep with, with an offset weight should look the same as your rep with a with, with a normally loaded weight if you're doing, you know, if you're doing a pattern that you would normally do uh, bilaterally loaded, right? So in this case, you know, there's no reason that the bar path should be any different on your on your offset loaded row than it should be um, with your you know, bilaterally loaded row, right? Which means you're gonna have to figure out how to do that. And you know, if you're working through this in, in your head, you realize it means you're gonna have to, you're gonna be applying kind of different stabilizing forces on both sides of the bar, right? So what I like about it is, like I said, that that it makes you kind of work, uh, you know, it kind of makes you work on keeping, you know, the things that, that promote stability as well as smooth movement because you can't just let the weight sort of do the work for you. And you'll find that as you do that, you'll actually get to the point with some exercise where you can start moving a little, a little quicker. So for example, um, yesterday I did, a, I did kind of a snatch workout. So I was doing, you know, offset muscle snatches with a mace and I was doing a um, squat snatches with a mace and things like that and and you'll notice that um as you get better with this stuff you can actually kind of start to move the weight a little quicker but in the beginning it, it's a great tool for kind of learning learning how to kind of balance you know how to distribute load how to distribute force and then the other cool thing is that you will find out right away where your asymmetries are you know you'll notice that on one side, it's a lot easier to be smooth and stable maybe than it is on the other side. You know, for me, I, for example, for me, you know, when I have, uh, when I have weight, um, on my, on my left side right now, it's a lot easier for me to move than on my right side. Cause especially if it's, if it's upper body, cause my right shoulder's a little jacked up, but, um, it, so it's a, it's a good diagnostic tool. So I would say if you're not doing offset weight training, whether that's, you know, kettlebells, maces, clubs, even offset barbell training, you know, just, I mean, try that sometime, you know, go, go into the gym and, you know, do a, do say, do like, do like say the big three, you know, do a squat, you know, squat bench, well, let's, let's go overhead press, do like a squat overhead press, uh, and deadlift and, you know, do four, add in a row and just, just load each side individually. And, you know, you'll find out that you gotta, you gotta kind of play it a little safer. So 
Yeah, but like I said, I think I think it, it'll, you know, it, it, it'll do wonders for helping diagnose your asymmetries, finding your leaks, and it'll it, it's great for proprioception too. I mean, you, you know, you will definitely develop better kind of spatial awareness doing that. So, yeah, I it, like I said, if, if that's not something you're already doing, you know, get get on that train for sure. And uh, again, if if that's something you need help with, you know, if you need some suggestions on how to kind of progress or just where to start, hit me up, and I'm happy to. To, to give you some info on that. All right, I think that's all we got for training talk. So let's jump to tech talk. Uh, and uh, I, I got some great tech talk questions and kind of same with um, with uh, the training talk. I actually got a bunch of questions, but I'm only gonna do one this week because I've only got about uh, 30 minutes left on this, I think. Thank you, IGTV. And uh, I, I kind of want to really give this one some some good attention. So the one topic that I'm going to cover in Tech Talk this week, and this is largely self-indulgent because, well, I'll get into why. Um, so I got a question on kind of what I think about the whole cyber, Cyberpunk 2077 debacle. And... Um, for those of you who are, who've been following, you know, if you're a gamer, if you're, you know, if, if you kind of know, you kind of, you probably know what's going on. For those of you who don't know, uh, Cyberpunk 2077 is a uh, first-person RPG, you know, role-playing game, sci-fi role-playing game, um, futuristic, and it was created by, uh, well, it was developed by a company called CDPR, CD Projekt Red, who's up till now <laughs> was, uh, was, was a very, very well-respected company, uh, very well-respected in the industry so much that, you know, they would take shots at other companies about, you know, kind of their, their practices and, you know, kind of their less than scrupulous behavior, we'll say. And, you know, they'd been promising quite a lot. Let's, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, some of the promises they made for Cyberpunk 2077 were pretty lofty. And in the end, they, didn't really deliver. You know, the the experience was 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 buggy. It was broken. Uh, they've been trying to patch it, but that's been also not without issue. I mean, for example, one of their patches I think caused a huge security hole in the game. Uh, things like that. So basically, it, it was. I mean, it, it was not a good thing. You know, is is basically. I mean, the kind of thing that. Uh, if any other business did it, I'm sure the company would get sued and would now be out of business and, and would be handing out refunds left and right. But um, as, as far as what I think about the whole thing, first of all, a caveat, I have not actually played Cyberpunk yet. Um, a, I don't think I have a computer that's capable of it. And B, I kind of want to wait till the uh, definitive edition that sort of fixes all of the, uh, the issues and, and maybe hopefully delivers on the promise of their... Uh, of their demos and all their hype. But uh, so what I'm going to talk about instead is kind of what I think about how it was approached from a kind of from a messaging standpoint and maybe even a little bit of a developing standpoint. Um, for those of you folks who don't know, I was actually in the games industry. I worked on games for 10 years, 10, 15 years, something like that. Um, it's yeah. And if you want to know who I work for, it's all on my LinkedIn. Go find me. I'm pretty easy to find. Um, so I'm going to talk about that because I've, you know, I mean, I've, I've been on the inside, I've seen how companies handle these things and, you know, there's things I agree with, there's things I don't agree with. Um, and, um, before I get any further, this, these, these are strictly my opinions. These are not the opinions of the company I work for now, which is pretty, pretty well tied into the games industry. And it's not, uh, obvious, of course, it's not the opinion of any company I've ever worked for. So this is just completely me, you know, based on what I know and what I think. So there's a couple things I, and, and, and I'm not going to say that, that CDPR is totally in the wrong. Um, one of the things that you hear a lot is, is, oh my goodness, the E3 demo was faked. And, you know, it was, and because, you know, for those of you who don't know, uh, E3 is a big games trade show and they, they showed this amazing, amazing demo, but again, as somebody who's been in the industry and kind of knows how those demos come together, first of all, that's that's really how it goes. I mean, a lot of those demos that you see at trade shows, and not just for games. I mean, you know, if you've ever been to any trade show for any industry, a lot of the stuff you see, unless it's a product that's on the market or is close to market, is not anywhere near representative of the final product. So... <clears throat> I think it's a little unfair for the games media, especially to kind of be, you know, acting like, oh my goodness, they totally faked their demo where, where in, when pretty much everybody does that and everybody knows that everybody does that. And 
and again, you know, to send up the media a little bit, it's kind of funny because companies have tried to just kind of say, okay, well, we're just going to show you the game as it is right now. And same thing, you know, they get beaten up by the media. It's like, oh, well, they shouldn't have showed us that because it didn't, um, you know, uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is a great example. Of, so there's, there's a Star Wars game that came out as a little while ago, which I thought was pretty good. It's a great game. But same thing, you know, rather than kind of coming up with a special event demo from what i understand the devs kind of just cut off a build and said hey this is we're just gonna show people this and of course they got kind of kind of crucified for it because it wasn't good enough so so you can't really win um you know just to to take the side of the developers i mean you know the media kind of always wants more of everything and then but if you don't give them exactly what they want you're the worst person ever because it's internet and we love hyperbole for some reason so i don't i actually don't fault cdpr for putting together a demo um, in, in the way that, like I said, demos come together. Um, what I kind of will fault them for is some of the comms that happened afterwards. So, and there were a bunch of things that I, th I think were, were not very, 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 very light, like just well executed all. First off, um, there was the whole refunds thing. And so, so what they did was they had, you know, they had said, Hey, you know, we're happy to give a refund. You know, we're, we're happy to give refunds. Uh, if you need a refund and you brought, and you bought it from, you know, on Xbox or PlayStation contact Microsoft and, and, and or Sony and, you know, and, and see what you can do. Now people tried to do that. And of course, if you know, if you're familiar with Microsoft and Sony and kind of what their policies are, they, they actually don't have a refund policy for digital products that I know of. Um, and so, you know, people had thought, and, and again, this is on CDPR, so I, so I think people assumed that CDPR had worked something out with Microsoft and Sony, but they actually hadn't. And CDPR kind of just tried to play it off like, well, that's just Microsoft and Sony's policy. But that's kind of shitty. I mean, you know, that because you know, they're, they're, they're doing, you know, they, they know that, you know, big companies like Microsoft and Sony, especially in, in game spaces already have kind of a bad rep. So they're kind of playing that up and, and making them and further making them the bad guy, which like I said, that's, that's just shady. I mean, that's, that, that's not a cool thing to do, especially because ultimately these guys do kind of have a say in, you know, how much access to the platform you get. So you, you don't really want to make enemies out of them. So I thought that was pretty poorly handled. Um, what else? Another thing that I thought was pretty poorly handled was, and, and uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to choose my words very carefully here, and and I wish I had actually um, pulled up the the actual article that I read this in, but there were some things where they some communications between the CEO of the company. And I guess the, some of the, you know, the board, the shareholders had quote unquote leaked and it, it kind of came off like the CEO was trying to distance himself from the decision to ship the game early and, you know, act like it was a complete surprise to him. And, you know, this was all the board's fault and, you know, and, and, and this, and, you know, and, you know, he's basically telling well, this is just what happens when you do that. And, and, uh, you know, try, trying to kind of really, really kind of put them on the spot. And, and, and I'm kind of thinking, you know, you're the CEO of the company. It, to, to act like you didn't have a hand in this is, especially when you're your own publisher. I mean, yeah, you have to answer to the board, but, y you know, to, 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 to A, throw your, your, your devs under the bus and make them kind of ship a product that they all probably knew wasn't ready. And then to act like to to your you know to your board like oh well you guys are the bad guys i mean that's just that's just a little two-faced and i hate to say it but that's another thing that you kind of see happen and not just in games i mean this is just you know th I, I don't know if, if you've if, if you folks have dealt with you know if you have friends who've you know worked with startups and been or been part of an acquisition or something like that or a, or a buyout or a spin out but you know I, I i have i mean i used to work and live and work in silicon valley and i mean i've seen people i've seen lifelong friendships broken up because of how things like acquisitions and buyouts and and company sales were handled so that's the kind of thing that you know, you have to tread very, very lightly on. But again, 
people don't. I mean, it, the reality is, you know, you, you see that many zeros and, you know, things change. And I'm not, and I'm not gonna say that money's even money. I, you know, I'm not a money is the root of all evil kind of person. I mean, I, I think money's great. You know, money solves all kinds of problems, but I guess, I mean, I guess if you, if you want to be a little philosophical there, you could say, I think money just kind of much like steroids, as some people say, <laughs> money just kind of helps reveal maybe character flaws that were already there. Um, so yeah, so that, that's kind of my take on that whole thing. I mean, it was a, it was a bad situation that was kind of made worse by people not being honest by people, you know, I guess doing it for the money and which is fine because, you know, that's, that's just, that's business. That's how, I mean, we're in a, it, it's a product driven environment. That's so, of course it's about the money and about the capital, but I think the, I think why it's so egregious in this case is that while this was all going on behind the scenes, you know, CDPR is kind of in public, um, you know, chastising other companies for doing these same things that then it comes to light that they actually did too, right? So, yeah. Um, hmm. All right, this is this is actually like kind of depressing me a bit now. So, um, so I, I think we're gonna wrap it up there. Um, yeah, that's yeah. I think I think this was a good episode. Um, got uh, like I said, got a couple questions. If you're one of the folks who didn't who who asked who, who's, whose question I skipped over this time, trust me, I will I will answer it next week. I promise. Your question is priority for next week. So there's there's a couple of those um, still, and um, yeah, looking forward to talking about those. But you know feel free to send me other questions. You know, I, like I said, I appreciate everybody contributing. I appreciate all you folks who are, you know, wanting to be, who are, you know, being part of this, really helping me, um, you know, helping me kind of create this content, you know, giving me stuff to talk about. Um, cause I, cause I have my own topics, you know, I, I have a list of topics that, um, you know, and that I always keep adding to just things I can talk about. But, um, like I said, you know, I, I like interacting with you folks. I want to, I want to make sure that I'm answering your questions, giving you information you care about. And ultimately, um, making this kind of a, as much of a dialogue as it can be for now. So I think that's what I got for, um, yeah, that's what I got for this week. Um, so I'll go ahead and, well, I guess I'll go ahead and sign off. And like I said, one more time, thank you everybody for participating. Uh, just to kind of circle back to the beginning, check out my brand partners, please, because they are, they are doing good work. I mean, that's why I'm partnered with them and they have great products that I think will help if you're kind of in, in any of those spaces. So yeah, that's uh, that's the weekly weigh-in episode two for Valentine's Day 2021, February 14th. Thanks for listening, and I will catch you next week. Cheers.